ich will. Dang. Woo, the monster. Whoa, he's taking a line. Crazy on the drop back there. All right, so today, guys, I'm after some KOUSs. Woo! Kokanee's of unusual size. And I'm on a reservoir that maybe a lot of you haven't heard of. It's called Fontenelle. And it's kind of out in the middle of nowhere in uh, southwest Wyoming. I gotta drop weight here. Oh, come here. Come on. There we go. The watercolor is a little bit off today, so I was a little worried. But I just had take down on the downrigger and then I decided oh, I better go deeper with my flatline rod. As soon as I did that, I hooked up. Let's see what we got here. I know I got a good size coke on because he went ballistic back there jumping. And I saw some chrome. This is an interesting reservoir in that the fish typically here don't go very deep all year long because it stays so cold. So they tend to run here in the top 20 foot of the water column all year round. Oh my god, that is a tank, guys. Tank. Okay. Now I've got, now I've got the adrenaline juices going. Okay. Oh, there it goes back down. Wow. These are beasts. I slowed down my troll quite a bit. I'm still having a hard time getting this fish in the boat. Oh, please come to Peppies. That's gotta be 19, maybe 20. Oh, don't miss that step. Yes! What the heck, guys? Oh my god. K O U S. Kokoni of unusual size in the net. That was on the orange hoochie. I put a spinner on this one because I thought, you know, these fish are gonna not be able to detect the lure in this dirty water but oh yeah that's solid 18 19 all right guys there it is gorgeous fish look at that thing amazing that's what i come here for wow they are very thick too very thick that's my first fish of the day i gotta tell you i'm not upset about that at all so that one was on Plain orange micro hoochie with my favorite Dodger, the Paulina Peak Light Silver Moon Jelly, Performance uh, Peak Light Silver Moon Jelly, and then just a light orange micro hoochie. And one thing with these big kokanee, after you get them, make sure you check your leaders, like especially the line between the two hooks, because they get chafed up pretty bad looks good now because these fish are shallow i'm not picking too many up on the fish finder so now that i caught that one i'm gonna start doing my loops right never leave fish to find fish especially when you can't rely on your fish finder to locate them that one i caught at 82 feet back with a one ounce clip weight with an additional 10 15 feet of line out see the thing i like about the clip weights is that if you run a sliding weight and it's tight to the dodger, when you make a turn, that dodger is going to drop super fast. But these fish are in the top 10, 20 feet of the water column. So if I have that weight pushed way forward, away from the dodger, and I make a turn, it can still light flutter, slow flutter down through that upper 20 foot. And I really like that. I think that's what helps trigger that bite. I'm running two different scents today. I got you know, krill shrimp base for both of these maggots but then i'm running anise on this side and garlic on this side just to kind of see what they're after surface temperatures on the water are 57.9 so a little warm for cooking to be feeding right on the surface so that's probably why they're down about 10 15 feet Ooh, geez. That was a hit. 
<laughs> you know there's a big one with it clips the takes it off the clip nice wow that thing hit like a ton of bricks so this fishery is actually maintained by hatchery plants there is a limit of six fish he made one big run there now he's kind of swimming with me i think he's taking me into my other line but we'll deal with that later yeah I got him around it. There we go. What do we got here? Can't tell if it's a rainbow or if it's a big kokanee. Move this back. There we go. Not really fighting like kokanee. Yeah, it's a huge rainbow. Huh. That's cool. Wow, that's a big rainbow. It's like grow some big bows too, it looks like. Look at the size of this thing, guys. Jeez. It's thick. I get my hands wet. Did you guys see this thing? Look at that. Well, they don't grow rainbows like that in Washington State. I think it's huge. In the gill plate, but not in the gills, so that's good. There we go. Get that fatty back on the on his way. Cool. Man, that was fun. That was a big fish. That's a healthy looking rainbow. I feel like there's a lot of fish holding right here in this area. So there must be some forage. We'll make one more pass through there. Why not? Got him. Another one on. Oh, it's jumping back there. It's a good sign. Usually the kokanee's jump. Man, they're still right in this area. So there are two launches uh, on Fontenelle, one near the dam and one further up the lake, about midway, on the both on the west side of the lake. And that's where I launched. Maybe it's a kokanee. And I think squirrely now. Yeah, just a smaller fish. Smaller fish in that like it's probably only 16, 17 inches. <laughs> Boom. Stay away from there. Yes, that's beautiful fish. Take that. And there's a channel that runs right down the middle of the lake. This is the Green River that's been dammed. That's a nice fish. Look at that. Chunky. I'm going to stay in this area because I've had fish consistently on most passes. Well, there we go. Just a dinky little 15, 16 inch fish. <laughs> When you're targeting these bigger kokanee, especially if you get them on just one hook and the other hook's allowed to like rub around on the gums, a lot of times you'll get some pretty significant wear between the two hooks. You know, and if I was just targeting little 8 to 13 inch kokanee, I'd probably leave it. But, you know, when there's a possibility of connecting with a 22 inch fish out here, that's you know four plus pounds i really don't want to have a weak spot in my leader so i'm going to change this out because there is some rubbing here some abrasion on that monofilament monofilament's pretty good about uh maintaining its strength um even with it being abraded uh, a lot more so than say fluorocarbon but um i just don't want to risk it so change it out for another fresh pink Same spot. Same spot. <laughs> Crazy. It's amazing on a, on a lake that's like, you know, 12 miles long and a mile wide. That I'm finding all these fish on just one spot. Cardinal rule. Never leave fish to find fish. There was a bunch of boats up here in the morning in the same spot I am now. But uh, they've moved down lake. Looks like there's another big rainbow. It's a nice mix of fish in here. That's a tank rainbow. Man, that thing is huge. 
pretty. Thing's as big as a steelhead. Come here, bud. Yeah, it looks like a freaking steelhead. Look at that thing. That is crazy. Crazy, crazy, crazy. Let's get him going. Yeah. Good water temperatures for catch and release. Rainbow, fortunately. Each pass I'm getting a kokanee or a rainbow trout. Well, I've been out here in this spot for about an hour and a half. I've got two rainbows, big ones. Two kokanee. And then I've had... <laughs> and then I've had a couple drive-bys and now i got this fish. Another big rainbow. Man, look at that fish. Okay, let's see if I can just get this guy released in a hurry. Got one hook in him. There he goes. Crazy. Biggins. My attitude about catching rainbows is a lot different when, uh, you know, they're 20 to 25 inch rainbows versus the, and they look healthy, big, big wide tails. And, all their fins are intact. It's a lot different than at home where they're all 14, 12 inches covered in parasites. There's fish on the on downrigger. That has been the hot rod today, but just been picking up rainbows. I think this is another rainbow. That fights like a rainbow. If it's a kokanee, he's one that just wants to get in the fish bag, I guess. Oh, no, no. That's kokanee. Now we woke up. <laughs> I'm all hung up in my other rod. Might bring it over here. See if we can't sort this out. It's a big kokanee, actually. He was just swimming with me. He just didn't care. That's a huge kokanee. And he's got all hung up on that weight. It's going to be a pain getting him in. Wow, that is a monster. That is a monster. Kokanee. Right into the net. Oh, oh my god, dude. Oh, that's got to be 22, 21 inches. Did that just happen? Oh my god, dude. That's a kokanee, guys. Look at that thing. Oh my god. That thing is gigantic. I'm speechless. Speechless. That is a K-O-U-S for sure. I'm flabbergasted by the size of this fish. All right, guys, look at this. Look at this kokanee. Look at that. That is crazy. The thing is giant. I can't even get it in the whole frame. That is spectacular. Spectacular fish. I mean, mine blown. Good old pink micro hoochie, man. The thing is a giant fish killer so i always tell people like if you can only buy one lure or kokanee that would be it yeah, i just started to leave the area where i had been catching them all this morning and i just moved a little bit south like maybe 100 yards 200 yards i got that big one so i still think they're right in this general area lots of fish there's lots of trout here too so there must be a good forage base going on you got you know, zooplankton, the base of the food chain, that's what the kokanee are feeding on. And all of the larger zooplankton are feeding on the smaller zooplankton and phytoplankton. And then you're going to have other fish feeding in there too. So that's why they're all piled in here. There must be a lot of resources here. You know, the channel comes down here, there's a big point comes out. And it, I think it maybe it creates a little bit of an eddy. It's, you know, obviously we can't detect it, but... What I'm thinking is, is that it creates a slow eddy. It can trap those zooplankton that are getting uh, pulled down um, in the lake, in the main current, in the main channel. 
and you just get these big slow eddies on the side and those fish will stack up in there. I see this at like Roosevelt a lot, right? Like um, you'll see points that stick out and then those fish will stack up in those, behind those points in those coves because those food resources, I think get trapped in there, right? And zooplankton can't swim. They just have to go with the flow. Um, the viscosity of water is like, you know, caro syrup to them. So they're pretty much uh, stuck wherever they get pushed. Here's fish. Nice. They're digging that uh, skateboard dodger. Not jumping like a kokanee would, but I had one not do that too. Oh, it's a big brown. That's cool. I didn't know they had browns in here. It's a monster brown. That's awesome. Yeah, look at the size of that brown, guys. That's gorgeous. There you go. See you later, buddy. That's cool. Take a big brown. Never like let me eat. <laughs> so the fastest way to get fish on is try to eat something. I brought that downrigger up shallower because I've seen more fish bust on the surface. Now that the wind's starting to pick back up. Let me get those fish. Oh. Nice kokanee. Squirrely. Oh. Get some line. Get him back here. Oh my gosh. What a big boy. There we go. Alright. Oh, there's fish. Oh yeah, that's cool. <laughs> we still it's coconut, they come right to the surface like that. Big fish too. Always on the inside rod turn it seems like today. They're following, following, following that it drops and then they they go for it. That is feels like a hefty fish. Whoa. You can tell when they've got their, their turn sideways or they're running. You don't want to really just kind of want to let them tire out. You'll, once they straighten that nose out, you'll feel that dodger start to wobble. That's when I start to retrieve again. You'll see the rod tip like, bup, 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 bup. it looks like your dodger is going in circles. That's when you know you got them pointed right at you. And as long as you have them that way, you can just keep slow cranking them in. People always ask why I keep pedaling. It's all about keeping pressure on them. This is a hot fish. Not like that big one I caught this morning. He was kind of like, just came in before he decided to wake up. Okay. He's just doing a little throb here and there. It's not as big as the big one this morning, but he's still a nice fish. Got him. Dang, that's a solid fish. It's in the 18, 19 inch glass. It might be pushing 20. Gorgeous. That's on that pink and white hoochie. There you go. Beautiful fish. Oh, buddy. Oh, I got another one. Trying to film. Getting doubles. He's running right at me. There he goes. I'm gonna try to bring him around here. I can net him if it's a kokanee. Don't want to dump my other fish out. It's a big kokanee. Whew. It's gonna be a mess, but come on. 
Come on. Come on. Yes. Two giant cooks in the back. That's my whip for the day. Woo. That is a way to end the day. Two fish. Boom. I mean, these are both 18, 20 inch cokes in the bag. That is wild. Well, that's how I'm ending my day. Two big kokanees in the bag. Look at this fish, man. I can't get over it. All right, guys, there's that double to end the day. Absolutely amazing fish. These are small fish. <laughs> uh, in any other lake that I'm at, these would be trophies. They're absolutely stunning. Thick bodied fish, just amazing quality fish here at Fontenelle. And that's not even the biggest one of the day. All right, guys, I am gonna be continuing on on my Coconut Across America journey, headed down to Flaming Gorge. Uh, Fontenelle is on the Green River, so it's the same river that feeds Flaming Gorge. It's about um, an hour and a half north of the gorge. So if you're looking for something a little bit different, a little bit smaller body of water, also has higher limits because it's a four fish limit in Flaming Gorge, six here in Fontenelle. You might think about coming on up here. It's a great place to, to kokanee fish, obviously. And uh, I think it would only get better as the water clears up. It's very dirty water today. So anyways, stay tuned. Make sure you like and subscribe. Uh, to follow uh, along on this journey across the United States, chasing all the best kokanee fisheries. Special shout out to my uh, sponsors. That is Old Town Canoe and Kayak, Paulina Peak Tackle, Cannon Downriggers, Ram Mounts, and Hummingbird, all of which I used heavily today and relied on heavily to uh, make this six fish limit happen. All right, guys, I'll see you next time out on the water. Just remember, fish smarter, not harder. Bye, guys.